Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the DNS service that's built into OS X Server. Now, DNS stands for Domain Name Service, and DNS is responsible for translating IP addresses into names. Uh, for instance, you know, you might have an IP address of, you know, 192.168.0.1, you know, that kind of thing. It translates that into www.toddoltoff.com. And so what it does is it takes those, those numbers, which are harder for us to remember, and translates them into uh, words, which are a lot easier for us to remember. And so it does that translation for us and takes care of those things so that it makes it easy for us uh, to be able to uh, understand those addresses and have those addresses resolved to the right names as well as resolved to the right server, okay? Because it also handles what server is authoritative for those various names and where to go to get the information that's sitting on that server. So the DNS service is very important. And with OS X Server, if your DNS is wrong, then you're going to have problems with everything else. So this is one of the most important services to make sure that you get right so that everything works properly. If DNS doesn't work, you're going to have problems with Open Directory. You're going to have problems with all kinds of other services. So it really is one of those uh, important uh, services to work out. Now, as we look at DNS, uh, there's a couple of different um, ways to look at it. And we talked about DNS a little bit in a previous screencast uh, when I uh, set up my server. And so if you remember on the server tab over here, when we set up server, I changed my host name and server asked if it wanted me to set up DNS for it as well. And I said, yes, set up the DNS. And so that's what it did. It turned on the service. And as a result, I have my host name sitting down here, as you can see, server.toddoltoff.com. And and that's the address that I've got set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through um, how to set up the DNS service. I'm going to show you what server already set up. And then I'm also going to show you how to set it up manually yourself, just in case you want to uh, have server uh, be front facing. Maybe your uh, server needs to be uh, authoritative, those kinds of things. But I'm going to talk through all of those details in the screencast. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the various settings that are here. And so I'm just going to start at the top here with the permissions, right? Right now I've got it set for all networks. If I click on edit uh, permissions here, I can set uh, connections from all networks, private networks, or only some networks. And so if I did, for instance, private networks, then it would only do the ones that are private, the ones I've got already set up. If I did only some networks, then it opens it up and has me select what networks I want to have happen. So right, this Mac, or I can create a new network if I need to do that. Now that's set up again in case you uh, have uh, an environment where maybe you've got multiple servers, you might have different subnets, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, it would allow you to uh, have one server handle DNS for all of those. So you could set those up in here. Uh, right now I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm just going to say cancel and keep it at all networks. Now you'll also notice down here I've got forwarding servers. You can see I've got two forwarding servers specified. And so let me just click edit here for a minute. Forwarding servers are servers that uh, handle DNS requests that the server can't handle on its own. So for instance, your server is set up to handle a lot of the DNS queries, especially inside your network. Okay, so things that are related to, uh, you know, maybe your own uh, website if you're hosting it yourself or the devices on your network. It handles those DNS inquiries, but it doesn't handle the things outside your network out on the public internet. And so you may need another uh, uh, IP address that, that can handle that for you to another DNS server that would actually look up that DNS for you. Uh, here what I've got is this is open DNS uh, that I use and so it uh, basically will handle all the things outside the network and it also included my routers uh, address as well. I'm just going to go ahead and take that off because I really don't need it. Uh, but you could add in uh, Google servers if you wanted to, you know, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Uh, as your DNS uh, forwarding server. You can put whatever you want there. But again, remember, this handles the uh, queries that your server itself can't handle. Okay, so I'm just going to say OK. And so you can see now I've got one forwarding server, and because of that, it just gives me the one address there. Now, lookups. I can perform lookups for, and you'll notice here I can do it for some clients or all clients. Okay, I can do either one just with a quick selector, or I can edit lookup clients. And so I want to talk about this for a minute because uh, these uh, lookups here are really important. If you happen to have a front-facing server, and that is a server where 
Uh, there's nothing between your server and the internet. This might be if you've got your server hosted in a co-location facility uh, or your server's uh, connected directly to your modem. Uh, then what you're going to want to do is only mark this doing lookups for the server itself. Uh, the reason is is when you're in one of those uh, co-location setups, right, where you're in a facility like that, uh, you could set up an open relay if you have it look up uh, for any other network. And when you have an open relay, then your server can get banned uh, because it's going to cause problems. And so you just want to make sure that that's the case. So again, when you're, when you're doing it, uh, hosting it in that kind of uh, environment, you want to do the server itself. Uh, the other choices I've got, again, clients on the local network or clients on the following networks, and I can add more networks on here uh, depending on, again, if I'm in an environment with multiple networks and I want this server to handle DNS for all of them. Uh, so that just gives you an idea of how that works. And so you can kind of do it, you know, both if you want to. So the server itself, clients on the local network, uh, and that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'll just leave that marked and say OK. All right. So now I've got that set up and ready to go. And so all of this now is the preliminary stuff to set up for DNS. Now let's talk a little bit about these host names down here in some of the different records that you set up because it's important to understand how this works. You notice here I've got my host name that I set up originally on the server tab. And again, server.toddoltoff.com. Now let me just come down here. And you notice if I hit the plus button here, it allows me to add a new host name if I want to do that, which I don't need to do. But if you had multiple host names, you could do that. I'm just going to say cancel. Uh, so what I need to do instead, and you can notice if I hit a minus, I can get rid of that record. What I would do instead is just click this wheel, and I'm going to say show all records. And so when I do that, now all of a sudden I get this drop down with more options. And so in, uh, in server here, I've got this triangle. If I just hit that, it shows the records that are set up. Uh, for my host name here. And then this is my reverse DNS, okay, reverse zone that does the testing on my number here, right? This is my local IP number that I set up. And so it does the testing on it. You'll notice I've got an A record here for server.toddoltoff.com. That's great. That's what I want. It's a machine record. And I've got an NS record, which is a name server record uh, for that as well. Uh, I don't necessarily need the name server record as much uh, in this case, but that's there. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And then I got my reverse zone here. Now, what I can do is because this is already set up by server for me, everything's fine there. I don't need to really mess with any of this. Server took care of all the records I needed for me, and that's there. Uh, but what I can do is I can add other options. Uh, you'll notice here if I click the plus, you notice I've got all of these other records I can add. So let me just go through these for a minute so you understand what they are. So this adding a machine record is the A record, okay? And so uh, you'll need an A record for sure uh, to use your machine of some kind, okay? Because that A record is what uh, will give you access to the machine itself. And that's why I've got an A record for server.toddoltoff.com underneath my primary zone of server.toddoltoff.com. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the primary zone a little bit more in a minute, but let me just go through these records. I've got add an alias record, and so an alias record is a C name record, and so basically that uh, gives me an alias. So if I wanted home.toddoltoff.com to par uh, point to my server.toddoltoff.com, I can set up an alias record to make that happen so that I can kind of create these subdomains that point to the main domain no matter what you put in. I've also got a mail exchanger record, and again, if you're running mail, you'll need an MX record. That's what this is called. It, you can have that set up for mail. Uh, a name server record is basically uh, which server is authoritative for the name that you've got. And so that's what a name server record is. Uh, on a lot of your hosting situations, you'll have an NS1 or NS2 record, and that means uh, that server is authoritative. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And then you've got your service records, which are just... Uh, different SVR records for different types of services and things, and you'll use these uh, not as frequently. Now you'll notice down here I've got a primary zone and a secondary zone. Let me just cover that for a minute. The primary zone is the zone for your domain. Now you'll notice that I've got for my primary zone up above there server.toddoltoff.com. Now the reason I did it that way is because I've got a split DNS situation. I've got a situation where I'm hosting my website not on my server here, but on my hosting provider's server. And so I want them to be authoritative for my domain name so that uh, everything goes through them. So they own the name uh, server records for my domain, and that's where I want to keep that. All right, so that's why I did it the way that I did it with the server.toddoltoff.com. For some of you that may have a front-facing server, you may do uh, just toddoltoff.com, for instance, and that would be your primary zone. And then you might set up several A records below it uh, for server.toddoltoff.com. You might set up an NS record, so NS1, NS2, 
uh, for ToddOltoff.com and those sorts of things if you've got a front-facing server or a server that's in a co-location facility where you're hosting it off-site. And so that's another way to do that. Okay, now that we've got those uh, all set and you understand what those records are, uh, again, I've got all this set up, and I've got this A record here. Now, because I want to access my server outside my network, I need to make sure that this DNS matches what I have uh, for my at my domain provider. And so let me just show you what that looks like and how to make that work. So I'm going to pull up uh, just a website here. This is Hover, and so this is just a domain provider. You might have a different one. Uh, I've got this one just to show you what it may look like to change your um, various settings here. So when you come into your uh, domain setting, and this is just for a different domain, uh, you come over to the DNS area. You'll have a DNS area somewhere uh, at your domain provider's site. Now in this area here, uh, you have the opportunity to add records. And so what I'm going to want to do is add an A record that points to my server.toddoltoff.com if this was my hosting situation. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to say add new. And so what you do is you put in your host name here. So I'm just going to type that in so you see what it looks like. So server .toddoltoff.com. Now depending on your site, you may not need uh, everything there. You might not have to put everything there. You might just put server in front of it depending on how your uh, provider handles it. Then record type, I'm going to want to put A. And then in here, you're going to put in the public IP address of your server. So whatever that public IP address is. And so, you know, if I just make one up here, I'll just use the one I got. Uh, you know, I two that one nine zero. Just make up the one that I've got down there. And so when you add that in there, you're going to say save. And what that will do is add an A record that'll show up down here. Okay. And for the one that you just set up for your subdomain, right? Your server.example.com or whatever it is that you've got. Okay. And that's where your A record would be. Now you want to set up an A record for every type you've got. So if you set up an A record for www, you want to put that in there and those sorts of things. Now on some websites, you'll have these things called these little wildcard things or at. Um, this just means anything in front of your domain name uh, has an A record that points to this particular server. So depending on who your uh, domain provider is, that's how you would set that up. Okay, and once you get that going, then your DNS is available on the outside for you to be able to connect to your server. Okay, I'm just going to cancel this because I don't want to set that up right now. So let me just put that down, but that shows you what you need to do in order to access your server remotely. So now we'll come back in here to our server, and now that we've got the DNS set up, we just need to do some tests of it to make sure that it's working properly. So I'm just going to um, put the server app down here for a minute, and what we're going to do is pull up uh, another application here. We're going to pull up the terminal. So let me just pull the terminal up here. And so in terminal, you can check your DNS. And so in order to do that, you're going to want to come into terminal, and you're going to want to use a, uh, a dig command, okay? So what we're going to do is type in uh, dig uh, with a space, dash x, and then you're going to put in your local IP address. So 10.0.1.3 for me. And you hit enter, and what it will do is return results to make sure that everything's working properly. And so you should see something like this. You can see I've got my... Um, my reverse zone. See, here's the question. Is everything working okay? And so the answer is, for this reverse zone, I've got a PTR record that points to, and this is just a pointer record, that points to server.toddoltoff.com, which is what I want. Uh, the authority section, again, for this area here, it's pointing, again, the NS record, server.toddoltoff.com. That's perfect. And then if I type in server.toddoltoff.com, it actually gives me an A record to my domain there, 10.0.1.3. And so that's exactly what I want to test that. And so it looks like my uh, DNS is working properly. Okay, that's one way you can test it. Now, another way you can do it, if I just put this down, and is with the network utility, uh, which you can find in the uh, utilities area. And you go to lookup and you do the same thing here. So I can put in, you know, server.toddoltoff.com. Dot com and I can hey, let's put look up and so it looks it up and tells me that's the domain that's exactly what I want uh, I can do it the reverse as well I can say I can put in my 10.0.1.3 okay and hit look up and it points to server.toddoltoff.com so that's exactly what I want uh, another thing I could do is if I was on another machine I could actually ping my server and put in the uh, address and hit ping. Uh, again, you want to do it when you're on uh, another machine because right now I'm pinging myself, and so of course it's working e internally. Uh, but you may want to do it externally to test it as well. And so you can see that that's actually working as well, and the pinging worked fine. So again, just a few ways that you can test uh, your server to make sure that it's working out okay.
So that's all I have for this week on DNS. Uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to set that up. Like I said, there's a difference between internal DNS and external. And for home users, uh, you'll want to set it up the way I did with uh, some kind of subdomain like server.whatever.com, especially if you're hosting a website on the outside. Uh, you don't want to just use like toddoltoff.com as your primary because otherwise then you won't be able to access any of your website stuff uh, because it's going to get stuck in a DNS loop there. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.